Hallelujah. God is good, good, good. And so this gentleman, well, he had quite a story to tell. I, I can't even begin to go into it all with you. But, but the, he just really talked about situations that we can find out that will be helpful to us here. Please put your phones on mute. <laughs> In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise God. God gave me this message earlier this week. And uh, he knew you were going to be here, so that's why he gave it to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is good, 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 good. Hallelujah. I, I think sometimes we forget until we get reminded <laughs> That not everybody out there speaks church ease. Not everybody that's out there has the background that we have or has heard some of the terminology that we've heard or cares a rip about theological terms. Right? Now, I, not, I went to Bible college for four years, and I did pretty well. God bless me. But he didn't bless me so I could learn a bunch of big words and come out and impress people. He educated me so that I could come out and find a better way to love people to Jesus. And that's really what it's all about. And even with that, that was just a start because of all these years since then, I had to keep on learning, keep on learning. Make mistakes and... Get up, brush yourself off, and learn again. That's kind of how it is. This message is going to be on the radio next Saturday, so I really want to make sure that those folks that are listening are going to really be blessed by this. I, the title of my message today, and you can put that up there if you would, Todd, thank you, is The Relatable Gospel, Relatable Jesus. Now, look at that picture that's up there. And, brother, if you got that on, on the camera, that's great. Relatable gospel, relatable Jesus. And you see the picture that's up there. Now, who is that? That's Jesus sitting there, isn't it? Supposed to be, you know. And what's he doing? Is he, is he just surrounded with a bunch of hyper-religious guys and he's, he's got his three-peat suit, suit and tie and looking all formal and, and, you know, and like he's got a big fancy title and he's unreachable and you can't talk to him because, after all, he is who he is? Or does he look like somebody that actually cares to mingle with people and love people and be close to people? I want you to get that image in your heart and mind today that that's the Jesus we're dealing with. Anybody that portrays him in any other way or is teaching you false doctrine about Jesus, a Jesus that doesn't exist. Amen. I want to read that verse to you. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 for though I am free from all men, I have made myself servant to all that I might win the more. And brother, when you go work missions in Kenya, you know all about this kind of thing. You just have to be with people and be among them and relate to them where they are. You can't go to people that don't know anything about the Lord or don't go to church or, or, or maybe in a different culture and just start saying, this is what I've come to tell you and you better listen up because I'm the expert. That don't work, does it? <laughs> doesn't, doesn't. You know, it doesn't, whether it's your family or strangers or a crowd somewhere or whatever it is. You got to just come and love people, don't you? You know, I say it all the time here. Love God, love people. Love God, love people, right? That's our, our main emphasis in this church is love God and love people. One of these days, these are going to be full up and you're not going to see that. Praise God. But there he is. Look at this picture. He's got the little child on his lap. A couple other kids around him and little down there listening to him. An older gentleman, a middle-aged kind of a guy down there, maybe the parent of one of those kids, I don't know. And there is a senior citizen off to the right and another middle-aged kind of guy, a younger guy. All generations, Jesus, right? All generations, all cultures, all generations, all colors. That's the Jesus we serve. The Jesus that came to love everybody. And... Uh, we, I think back in the 90s, especially when there were a lot of churches that were, Brother Parsley's church and other ones, that 
they had these great big praise teams, and they were running five and 6,000 people in, in, in a service. And they had orchestras and bands and all that that looked super professional. And, and the, the, the three-piece suit with, and, but with the vest and the tie and everything, and it was all, all in place and looking real proper, and it really meant to impress. Although I'm sure it was not just meant to impress. I think they also did it because they loved the Lord and wanted to serve God. But, but uh, you see, I don't wear a tie in the pulpit. I have it for a while. I mean, if I do again, that's okay. If I go to a funeral or a wedding, I'll probably wear one, you know, or especially if I'm officiating, I will. But I have no problem with it except for I, I'd, almost, I'd almost come up here in blue jeans, but I'm not quite ready to do that yet, but a lot of pastors do, and it's not a big deal to me. And, and sometimes when Josh preaches, he's up here in blue jeans or black jeans or whatever, and different ones of you, and my brother. It, it's not the big deal, is it? The big deal is that you got a lot of God in your heart and word and revelation and love for God and love for people, and you communicate that, right? Amen. Testimony. Tell them what he's done for you. Amen. It's all that. So this is the Apostle Paul talking. For though I'm a free man, free from all, me and I have made myself. I'm free, but I made myself something. I'm free. I'm free in Jesus, but I chose because I want to do some good in this world because I want to relate to somebody and help people that they're, they're in a mess and they're not going to find any hope or any way out if I don't somehow find a way to get the message to where they can hear it, relate to it. I've made myself a servant to all. That's what Paul said. And friends, that's what we're all about today. Me and you. Jesus even took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of sinful men and died a death on the cross. Because he didn't come to say, in fact, when he was born in a stable, born in a manger, laid in a manger, born in a stable. Well, that sure is a, trying to impress somebody, isn't it? No. It's, I know what it does impress me with. It impresses me that God can reach to the highest, to the lowest. Amen. And anywhere in between. Because Jesus loves you. He loves me. Love breaks down the barriers. 1 Corinthians 9.20 And to the Jews, this is Paul talking still. To the Jews I became as a Jew. Now I want you to see the pattern here. I'm going to talk to these people, so I'm going to try to sort of be like them. And that doesn't mean I'm compromising my character or I'm trying to fake anybody out or pretend I'm something I'm not. But what it just means is when I go to these people, I want to see how, my, how we can relate, Right? Let's, let, let me go to where I can, can relate to people where they're at. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight, no matter what of culture or color. Uh, when sometimes Bob will send me videos of some of the church services over there in Kenya. By the way, I appreciate my brother being here with us now, and we're going to trust the Lord to help him get his wife and baby over here. And uh, while he's here, though, he's going to be working. Don't know what to work to help lead us in evangelistic efforts. But, but you know, you might say that, well, when I go to church, I don't want to hear that kind of music. That's not my culture. I don't, why, do, why do they have those colors on the wall? Well, because that's them and they like it. And to them, they're, they're just loving Jesus and serving God. So why would I ever want to get in the way of however somebody else loves and serves Jesus? I mean, if they're real, I don't mean if they're just faking it, but I mean if they're real and it's from their heart, why would I want to judge somebody else's I don't like that. Somebody, I heard a, a story about a, a guy that went to a missions in Africa, and, and he was at a church service, sort of. I guess you could call it that. And they were kind of talking about the Lord, but they only had the only instrument they had to worship the Lord with was one drum. And the guy said, I had to really pray about it because I was getting every, sort of irritated because <laughs> all it was was boom, 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 with a drum, one drum, no instruments. Hardly any other variation in the beat. That was kind of it. And he said, how can I worship God to that? Well, for some reason to them, that's all it took to let them get set free and, and just really see Jesus and love God and worship the Lord. Amen. So that's why when church, some churches want to sing all, out, all, hymnals, all hymns out of the hymnal, well, God bless you if that's what's good for you.